21. Listen to what David says. He says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from some e evil. No, no. All evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And the word of God is already blessed. Just for a little while, I'd like to speak from the subject, David's remedy for relief. Somebody say, David's remedy for relief. Every head bowed, every eye closed as we look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you once again for just allowing us to assemble together during trying times. God, we know the world is fearful right now, God, but we're going to continue to stand on your word. And we're going to continue to put our trust in you. Now, Lord, I pray for your anointing, oh God, to use me, God, to share this word that we can all share it with others who may be fearful or frightful or anxious. Lord, have your way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. David's remedy for relief. Thank you, ushers. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, this current pandemic, scientifically known as COVID-19 or the coronavirus, has placed the entire world in a state of uncertainty. And with uncertainty comes fear. We talked about fear this past Wednesday night at Bible study, but, but fear has the ability to send our minds racing in a thousand different directions, flooding our thoughts with what ifs. Yes, what if this thing hit one of my family members? What, what if they close my child's school for the rest of the year? What if I have to stay at home from work? What, what if they close my place of work? What if I go two or three a weeks or even a month without a paycheck? These what ifs. You see, what, what we need right now in the midst of everything that's going on is a mind regulator. Grandma said he'll be a mind regulator because that's what happens. We start thinking thoughts of, of what if this happened, stuff that hadn't even happened yet. But I thank God that he is a mind regulator. Because if the truth be told, none of us here today could have imagined just a short time ago that we would be facing a deadly virus that has no vaccine. However, this is not the first time we've been hit. By, by, by something like this. We, we, we dealt with the Ebola. Y'all yeah. remember? Yeah. The swine flu. Yeah. H1N1. Yeah. Amen? And in each of these cases, there were people who died. But in each case, these diseases were eventually contained. Yeah. You see, God's word warns us that troubles do come from time to time. But his word also promises that troubles don't last always. We've been laying good for a night, but joy it cometh in the morning. But nevertheless, here we go again. And it's a place we've been before, but this time we can find ourselves with questions that no one has the answer. We don't know how many will be infected when it's all said and done. We don't know how far it has already spread right now, because it seems like it's moving daily. By the minute, by the hour, we don't know how many people may die. Now, each year, you can read that the flu takes thousands of lives right here in America and even more thousands around the world. Yet, yet many people still refuse to take the flu shot. 
Oh, you changing that shot? Mm -hmm. But 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 sometimes it's for good reason because sometimes you can take the shot and still get the flu. But 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 there's greater a greater anxiety that's surrounding this coronavirus because there is no shot right now that we know of and no cure right now other than good old home remedies. Tell everybody, wash your hands. <laughs> Keep your hands out your mouth, out, 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 out your face. Wipe areas. Get up, get up, wipe it. This, this is stuff grandma taught us. Amen? Yeah. Gargle with salt water. Yeah. I mean, this is the simple stuff they're saying that can prevent or even strengthen you. Drink lemon water. You guys remember grandma said put some little lemon in your water? Yeah. Amen? Small things. But now they're saying, just stay away from infected people. Why would we want to be around infected people anyway? So therefore, this big thing called social distancing. Stay away. Because we don't want it to spread, but there's no cure. But for the people of God, Psalm 121 has been the cure for our fears for thousands of years. Yes, yes, when we feel overwhelmed by the unknown, many believers turn to David's remedy for relief. And it's here in Psalm, this Psalm that David reminds us that when life seems to be on shaky ground, it's a good time to really focus on where your real help comes from. I'm talking about David's remedy for relief. Somebody say a remedy for relief. You see, according to Jewish tradition, the, the Jews would make a pilgrimage three times a year to the city of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, as you know, is the home of Solomon's temple, and it served as the ancient capital of the nation. Now, Jerusalem, it sat strategically up on a hilltop. The city of Jerusalem was up. So whether you came from the north, the south, the east, or the west, you were always going up to Jerusalem. Mm. And as the Jews would make their way to the city to worship God and to make sacrifices, they would sing songs together. And they were led by the Levite choir. And the Psalm 121 was one of their go-to songs as they traveled to Jerusalem. And in this song, David says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. He was saying, when I lift up my eyes, I saw the city. I see the city of Jerusalem. But how many know there's a new Jerusalem, a place called heaven that's going to come out of the sky? So David was prophesying and said, even the New Testament church, you can lift up your eyes unto the hills from whence cometh your hell. See, the newspapers and magazines bombard us with ads promising to meet our needs. There are all kinds of infomercials on TV selling all kinds of products that claim to be just what you need. They're products to take away your pain. Products to cure depression. Pro products to restore your energy. Products to, to help you sleep at night. An appeal to help you wake up. <laughs> Products to remove bags from under your eyes. Products to make your, your skin baby soft. Products to help you get your groove back if you lost it. <laughs> yes, drug companies, they promise all kinds of cures. But so does the liquor store. Uh, yes, they say Hennessy and Jack Daniels, it will promise to numb your fears. But if you drink this, you won't worry about a thing. <laughs> Finding the hobby promises to take away your boredom. Entertain it at home, promise to make you feel included. But when you sit back and really think about all of these temporary fixes, we soon come to realize that, that in the end, all of our help really comes from the Lord. He's the one who made the world and everything in it. I'm still talking about David's remedy for relief. Somebody say a remedy for relief. So the purpose of Psalm 
121 was really to show us exactly how God is our help in times of crises like these. And the first thing this psalm shows us is number one, it shows us how God watches over us. Somebody say, he watches over us. Yes, the scripture just told us that, that he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. You know what slumber means? Just to nod, you know, nod off. Take a short nap. You know, just a little quick one, you know. The ones you do it um, while you're at work. Go to the break room, just, whew, just a power nap. The Bible says God don't, he don't nod, he don't nap. He don't sleep because he watches over his own. Now, now if you've ever served in the military, you know that, that guard duty is an important job. It is, it's a 24 hour responsibility and the guard's most important function is really just to stay awake. In fact, if a soldier does fall asleep, he or she can be charged with neglect of duty and be court-martialed. It may sound pretty harsh, but, but guard duty can become a life or death situation. Yeah. Especially during a comeback or especially during a crisis. How can you sleep when something is going on? How can you sleep when the enemy is in your territory. The enemy is walking around your house. How can you sleep? Well, baby, we gonna go to sleep. But God said he gonna stay awake and since he's gonna stay awake, he'll keep us in perfect peace even in the midst of the coronavirus because he does sleep. So David really just wanted us to know, it's simple. David wanted us to know that God never sleeps. He, he's awake 24 seven. Yes, God is always on permanent guard, guard duty. And he's watching over us day, all day, every day. Because it is a matter of life and death. As a matter of fact, the Lord is watching over you and me right now as we're in the church worshiping his holy name. And that's how we can be assured that he hears and answers every prayer that we pray because he's awake. Yes. yes, yes. And his answers are always on time. All we have to do is trust in him with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. Yes, trust him with your body. Trust him with your mind. Trust him with your spirit. And all things will work out fine. That's what the old folks used to say. He may not come when you want him. But he's always right on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. We're still talking about David's remedy for relief. Somebody said remedy for relief. So, so, so the first thing we see in the text is how God watches over us. But secondly, this is important. Number two here in the text, don't miss this one. We see that number two, our protection comes directly from God. You look at verse 5, it says, the Lord is thy keeper. Yeah. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Now, I can envision the, the, the Jews singing this song on their way up the desert hillsides to Jerusalem. And it was a hot and dry and humid Pilgrimage. Just imagine how oppressive the sun would be a hundred plus degrees as they walk mile after mile just to fulfill their obligation to return to the holy city to worship God. The sight of a rare shade tree along the way or the refreshing waters of an oasis would no doubt lift their spirits and encourage them to continue on with their journey. But then comes the night with its cooler temperatures. But still they had challenging circumstances. Yes, nighttime, it brought the fear of robbers and wild animals who were searching for food. Yes, this was a dangerous and hostile environment just to get into the presence of God. So they would sing 
these words together as they treaded along the way. The Lord shall preserve us from all evil. Yes, he shall preserve our soul. In other words, he will preserve us in the times of weaknesses. He will preserve us in the times of danger and despair. He will preserve us in times of difficult decisions. He will preserve us in times of anguish and heartache. He will preserve us in times of trials and trauma. He will preserve us in times of challenges and crisis. And thank God that even in the face of the enemy of this coronavirus, he promised to give us 24-7 around the clock protection. Yes, he will preserve his own. We're talking about David's remedy for relief. How do you spell relief? Somebody say a remedy for relief. So first of all, text shows us that God watches over us. Secondly, it shows us that God protects us. But then third and finally, and we're through. We're going to let y'all go out. But you can't go to the restaurant and eat unless you take it. It's got to be to go. Amen. That's when they go home cooking. I know some peas and greens is on, on the stove somewhere. Roast. Turkey necks, neck bone. Somebody got some somewhere cooking. Just put it on low. It's in the crock pot. I can smell it. You just, just wait. You can't wait till the service is over to say, Pastor, you want to come over for a bite to eat and a roll of tissue to take along your way. Because while we're traveling, y'all, this road against rough summits. <laughs> so he watches over us, number one. Secondly, Olivia, he was, he does what? Number two? He protects us. Oh, you, you look, thanks for helping her out because she was. But then third and finally, the text shows us that God's protection is permanent. Somebody say it's permanent. Look at verse 8. This says, The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. In other words, this just ain't no temporary thing. When I first got saved at 22, I had an uncle to tell me, oh, you don't fight for the Lord now. I'm just going to see how long it lasts. Well, baby, it's been over 25 years now. And I, I, I still get excited about the Lord. Maybe you just told me, and I'm glad he didn't say 22 because I've been on 22 for the longest, but I twisted 25. I, I, I know my dog. Amen? But it's real. You see, we can never exhaust God's power to protect us. From the moment we accepted his son as our personal savior, his power was unleashed in us and through us and is going to abide with us from his forth now and forever. So the Apostle Paul, he knew much about grief, but he also knew how to trust in God's permanent protection. Yeah. Yeah, and Paul would encourage all of the churches that he established with bold proclamations. For example, to the Romans, Paul said, who shall separate us from the love of God? Yeah. Then he goes on to say, shall tri tri tribulation, mm -hmm. distress, yeah. persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? To the Corinthians, Paul wrote, thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But to the Corinthians, he also said, we're troubled on every side, uh -huh. but, but, but yet not distressed. He said, we're perplexed, but not in despair. He said, we're persecuted, but not forsaken. He said, we're cast down, but not destroyed, because God will watch over his own. Continue in prayer and watch in the same thanksgiving unto God. In other words, watch and pray and keep a praise on your lips because his protection is permanent. So, so what are we watching for during this time? Well, we are watching 
for the bread of life to continue to satisfy our hunger. Yeah, yeah. We are watching for the fountain of life to continue to quench our thirst. And while we're watching, we are praying and we are giving praise to God for all that he's done, for what he's doing right now, and for what he's getting ready to do. Because how many know that God is still in control? So as we continue to go about our daily routines, we can trust that God's protection is steadfast and is permanent it. Uh, yes, from everlasting to everlasting, uh, He is God. Uh, and we may face great challenges ahead, uh, but Christ is still our strength. Uh, we, we may get exhausted at a certain point, uh, but Christ is still our trust. Uh, we may get to the point of confusion, uh, not knowing what to do, uh, but Christ is our counsel. Uh, or we may get to the point even of fear, uh, but Christ is still our security. And when we feel like we're all alone in this thing, Christ is our constant companion. He is a heavy load chair, a bridge over troubled waters. He's still a doctor in the sick room, a lawyer in the courtroom. Yes, he knows every test and trial that you've had to go through. He knows every sacrifice that you've ever made. God knows every hardship that you've had to deal with. He knows every storm that you had to go through. Every burden that we're bearing. Every cross that we're carrying. Every tear that we've been crying about. Yes, God knows all about it. Somebody say, He knows. But here, here in the text, David reminds us that the Lord is always on his job. Yeah. And he's just not our company keeper, but he's our watchman on the wall. Yeah. He's looking out and he's armed and he's dangerous. Yeah. Our God is a man of war. Yeah, yeah. He's a just God. Yeah. And we got more, far more that are for us yeah. than there are against us. Yeah. Yes, David knows that the remedy for our relief is to keep our eyes on the Lord. Yes, yes look to the hills yes, from which cometh your help. Yes, all of your help, it cometh from the Lord, even in the midst of a pandemic called the coronavirus, God is still our help. Yes. I heard that all over Italy, yeah. even though they were hit hard by the coronavirus, people began to hang white sheets oh. out of their windows with these words written on the sheets. Tuto Andre Bini which means everything is gonna be all right. Yeah. So in spite of this coronavirus yeah. and what the world is going through, acting all mad and fearful, I just came on today just to let somebody know that everything is gonna be all right. Somebody say everything is gonna be This too shall come to an end because God is still God and He is our refuge. He is our strength. He's our remedy for relief and He will not suffer that food to be moved. Yes, He will preserve us from all evil even forevermore. We have a remedy for relief and His name is Jesus Christ. The Son of the living God who hung, bled, and died that we might have eternal life. Yes, Jesus died that we may be saved, that we may be healed, that we may be filled. So regardless of this coronavirus, we at Greater Pleasant Grove, we're going to keep on preaching 
and bleaching. Whether we're at church or at our homes, you can still praise God in the midst of your cleaning. We're going to keep on praying and spraying because God has given us wisdom. He's given us power, love, and a sound mind. And we're going to keep on baptizing and sanitizing because we know that he's a real keeper of our soul. He's a real cleaner. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So I just came to tell you that we have a remedy for relief. Somebody say a remedy for relief. I'm through. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Hallelujah.